Hello, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to go over the concept of React and some of the features inside React and what they look like and how they work. So React is a declarative, flexible JavaScript library. Okay, it's not a full-fledged framework, by the way. It's just a library that uh, focuses on the view. So if you look at the model view controller paradigm, it focuses mainly on the view or the user interface. And because of that, then uh, it's very flexible and you don't need the full-fledged um, framework like Angular or Ember or other frameworks to, to build it. Okay, so it is just a library. Okay, so at the heart of Ang React is um, a bunch of um, components. Okay, it relies heavily on components. It is a component-based uh, um, library. So here's an example of what a component may look like. Again, this grab this from the book here, a little typo here, so make sure you, you're aware of that. Because it follows the strict rules of the XML, every tag must be properly closed, whether it's a single-sided or double-sided tag. Okay, so every component will have these, I think, like seven uh, functions built into it automatically. These are called lifecycle methods, or sometimes referred to as the lifecycle hooks. Okay. And uh, so you can think about these like, uh, you know, uh, functions that are built into a class, right? The class is called the components class, which is a React component class, a parent component, a parent class of all other components are built in based on this parent class. So every component you create will automatically inherit all these seven functions. Okay, so we'll uh, talk about these much later in the course. These are really important when you get deeper into the component and how they work and so on. But for now, a component is consists of these seven functions and you don't have to use them right away yet but they will occur uh, automatically and then also show you how you can build the code in the code how to create a component but a component component has access or has uh, something called props okay it's a the different ways to store data props and another one called state which you don't see here so props and state are part of a component okay so let's talk about Another example here, look, look here, now we expand a little bit the one we just saw above. Now, if you want to add that to an application, then you have the React app here. Okay, to make that work, your component must be bootstrapped to the DOM, to the actual DOM. So somewhere on your site, whether a single page application or existing page that you want to just add a, a, a component, a React component to the, the page, you must still need to attach it to the actual DOM one way or another okay and you do that by uh, using one of these functions called the react DOM uh, function and so for example you must have a root component somewhere right to attach to the DOM tree and this example here will attach to either a website you know a desktop application that runs on a server like a regular HTML page or the VR or a, a native uh, or iOS or Android devices. We're not going to do this here. We just focus on the server here, the web server. Okay, so we inject that through a, um, a element on the DOM tree. And then all your components can be um, inserted through that slot. Okay, and then down here, let's take a look at an example here is a particular um, example of what the app might look like. And so this page here, this could be a single page application, it could all be built with, with um, and, and using only React, or it could be an existing page that built in by, you know, your, your static HTML or PHP or whatever, right? And each of these boxes here, you can see it can be a, a component that you can add to the existing page if you want. I could add this carousel only for uh, that carousel to be um, a React component, or maybe these items here could be a React component, right? So each of these can be added separately if you want to an existing page, or again, all of these can be added to a single page. And another example here is the same same idea. Okay, so let's go down here to the real DOM versus the virtual DOM. So the real DOM, we know what it is, right? It's just the actual document object model that exists in the browser for a web page. Now, this is the real DOM. Uh, it's different from the actual, we call the physical DOM. Physical DOM is the actual HTML uh, you hard code into the, the document, right? The physical file. That's the physical DOM, of course. But the real DOM is the one that you usually see all the time on the browser. 
So if you do a source view, for example, if we go here, and if I look inside here, this is the, so this is the source view, right? You see here, this is the actual physical DOM because whatever these are is physical. You cannot remove these unless you change the file or something, right? So the virtual of the real DOM is when you inspect it. So if I do right click and I inspect the source page and in here, the real DOM, uh, not the source, I'm sorry. I should inspect it right here, F12. And inside the elements, this is the real DOM we're talking about. So this is a DOM tree because these can be modified uh, either programmatically or um, in, a, in other ways, right? So this is the real DOM we're referring to when we see the real DOM. Okay, so these are what you see here, something like that, right? And then now React has another DOM called the virtual DOM that sits right above these real DOM and the actual React code itself. So we have this virtual DOM that sits above it. And so the idea behind this virtual DOM is that it has a replica or copy of the actual DOM. So when you make changes to the actual DOM, it will go through the React code, it comes back out, and it compares the virtual DOM against the actual DOM and see if there's any changes. And so like down here, if there's any changes in the DOM tree, then it will update the actual DOM with the one that's been added to the DOM tree. And now you have a copy uh, of the actual DOM in memory already because you added that here before you uh, you know, um, introduce that or attach that to the actual DOM. Okay, so this again, it depends how you do it. It, it could be the entire web page or it could be just a single widget on the page. So whatever you attach to this DOM here, the actual DOM, could be again just one piece or the entire page will be a copy there's a, a copy of memory of that DOM tree so so that it knows what to um, compare to when you make changes and that's a whole logic the whole idea behind react and I do have a video a separate video to show you the uh, subtle differences between you know the react DOM and the, actual, the real DOM when they uh, update data using vanilla JavaScript so I'll find that video for you okay so that's the real DOM and the virtual DOM. And then down here is a more example of the JSX basics syntax. Now JSX is a, um, I guess that's a, uh, a template language that is used in React and it's not HTML. Okay, if you look at it, it looks just like HTML, but it is not, even though it takes the same uh, tags and they use the same HTML tags uh, but still it's not HTML. You just want to keep that in mind. But but it, it functions the same way as HTML, right? You, you see the structure is the same. The only rule is that you must close all your tags. The HTML, you don't have to close your BR tag or HR tags. In here, you have to because, again, it follows the same, same rule, the XML syntax, all right? And so I put some examples here to show you that the reason why it's not HTML is because HTML does not have the class name attribute, right? This is part of the JavaScript syntax. And so as you can see, it's like a mixture of HTML and JavaScript all together. And because it's in a really weird language syntax, browser does not understand it. So you must find a way to convert this to the basic standard HTML and JavaScript syntax. And you do that by using uh, a program called Babel. Okay, well, Babel will does that for you. It will transpire your uh, syntax to something that um, browser understand. The same idea for TypeScript, for example, right? You need a, a, a transpiler to do that for you. Okay, so um, that is uh, what a JSX syntax will look like. And you have, you know, you can add IDs, classes, you can add um, Color braces in there, as you can see here, these color braces are uh, for string or text interpolation. And you have the two color braces here, these for objects. If you're passing object to it, you use two color braces. These are object literals. And I mentioned down here some examples. Okay. If you were to do using the object literals, then you have to put a two color braces outside of inside the color brace. Um, this is not the preferred way to do it but you can do it it gets confusing that way so usually you would take that out and put it into a variable like this and then you pass just the variable to that single color basis so you can access the same way as you do here okay 
So this is what you would do uh, inside the receiver or the child component. This or this here is inside the parent component or the component, that's, component that sends the data to the underlying component called, in this case, the user component. When you use a component inside there, you receive this information through this property called info. You access the info through another object that is reserved in, in uh, React called props because these are called properties, right? So the props.info.name gives you this name, which is my name, and so on. Okay, so you follow this, this uh, same object syntax in, in you know, uh, JavaScript. Right, and then again, just some basic rules that you must close all tags, like the HR, you must put a slash to close it, okay? All right, and uh, you can learn more about JSX here. I put two links here to the reactjs.site.org site to learn more about if you need to learn more about them. But uh, don't worry too much about it. You learn as you go, and they're they're very easy to learn. So down here, let's look at the um, a, a typical app structure, a folder structure. If you're using the CLI to build it for you, you don't have to do it this way. By the way, you can do it differently. You can just use a um, uh, because again, all it is is just a library, right? So, like, if you think about like jQuery, you can just you know install the script to load the entire React library into a, a index file on the header section, and then you can build that way. But if you're using the CLI, the command line interface, like we will be doing, then you have something like this built for you automatically, but using the uh, React uh, uh, function to scaffold all this for you automatically. So you're gonna see something like this. Uh, you have your name of your app. You're gonna have the node node modules here contains your libraries, a uh, a package JSON. Again, this one here maintains or controls what needs to be installed, what packages need to be installed. Based, and they will install those inside the node mod node modules folder. And you can have a public folder. This is the public or the static data you add to, like your index file, your HTML pages, or here or your images and so on goes in here this is static data and then here in the src is where all your sources for your um, react uh, code okay and so mainly just three files right the node module public and src and what we'll, we'll see this example in a separate video once you build the app so you can have a better understanding of what they are but kind of go over this and see what things are and compare that to um, the actual code so down here if you look at it the same structure here if you put into perspective using you know diagrams right so we have the um, index page this is html that is this one here number one the index page is you have a, a tag, a div tag, that's the idea root, and then this is where React will inject its code into, through this div tag with the idea root. The index file, JS, has a root, right? You should get, um, you should see this, this is very familiar, document.getElementById root, it points to that tag, and then in that tag, it's going to render this app component which in this case is from here, okay? Because we imported this in to the index.js file. You could have all these inside a single file if you want. Not ideal, but you can. But it, it's not uh, the way you do it. You would separate them out into their own files and then you import into the other files. So you put that inside here and then whatever, it's, whatever, whatever this contains will be added or will be rendered or displayed at this location. And then in this example here, this app here contains more information. It contains another widget called weather, contains a, um, a component called nav bar, a footer bar, right? And then instead of footer and the nav bar, I injected, I added another component called the login of both places, okay? So you have something that might look like this, all right? So the login is a child inside the nav and the footer, and then um, they are actually, by the way, they are completely independent. Okay. So if you look at the arrows here, it, this is the same structure as um, diagram you see maybe in a, you know, object-oriented diagram. Right? The arrow points to the parent. Okay. 
It doesn't mean the data flow is that way. It doesn't mean that way. It just means that it, it um, points to the parent class or component in this case. All right. And then down here is the actual example of code. Notice this is a single file called index.js, for example. I could have, and this one have two components. One is the root component uh, called the app component. It's called app. And then I have a child component called hello. I call it child because I'm going to put this inside the app, right? It could be the other way around. It doesn't matter. So whatever you put into, that becomes the child component of that app because it depends on it, right? And so you would bootstrap the child component inside the root component inside here like a tag. And then you will bootstrap this app component into the root of the, um, of the DOM through this root ID. And then you add that here. And everything, everything that is associated with this app component will be rendered here. So you, this will be will grow, it will expand out, right? Uh, as this one gets compli complicated, get more complex. So once you create a class or a function, you can see the two ways to create components in React. You can use the class approach or the function approach, and both will work exactly the same when you add it to the um, to the other component. And the only difference is, well, there are actually some differences, not a whole lot, but some differences um, between the two. This is a much quicker way to do it because you don't have to concern about the render function. You see here, one of, the, one of the differences, the class has a render function you don't see here. And the inside of the render function, you have the return part, right? So this return is exactly the same as this return here in the function, okay? And then the function, just like your typical JavaScript function, the name and then the app, and then you do that. Of course, you can also use the arrow function if you want to. That's fine too, but um, this is a typical function. And then here, the class, if you're using the class method, you must extend the React component class, super class. Okay? And then inside here, you have the render, you have to use the render function to render this to the browser. So you can think of this return function, return part as the template. This is the template of your uh, module or your, your component. All right? And there are more things in here you don't see, like the constructor and other functions you can add in here which we'll learn much later. Uh, but both of these will, will work just fine. Now, the major difference between the two is that uh, between the props and the state, those two properties I, or, or uh, objects I mentioned earlier. So the props can live in both places, but the state can only live inside the class. So we'll talk about state and what that means later on uh, in the course when, when we deal with um, passing data from you know, the child to the parent, the parent to the child, and so on, so forth. That becomes really important. Okay? So, um, as you can see, I can have everything on the same page here, or um, not ideal, so usually you will take that out into the own file, and then you import back in using the import statement like this. All right? So let's look at the last one here. Uh, just a video I showed you. Um, it's an older video, kind of show you what they, how do you create your app but uh, the functionality, the logic still holds, okay? All right, so I think uh, that is the basic structure of what React looks like, components, and so on. So kind of go over these examples here. Again, read chapter one of the book and, and also chapter two, see the actual example, the actual code, so you get the hang of it, and just practice, okay? And then if you have any questions, again, just don't, uh, hesitate to let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions.